Today's episode of Between Mo is brought to you by Audible. For a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook, just head on over to gboffer.com slash audible. Do, 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 do. What's up, everybody? Welcome to This Week in MMO. That was the short version of the intro music that I don't have. What's up, everybody? We, we have been away for like two weeks. We're back doing it from the house again. Hashtag fix the studio, Gary. It's trending on Twitter right now. Just haven't got it done. Worldwide. Worldwide. Joining me as always, the Dube Fridge, Mr. Troy. How are you, sir? This is actually my first Twimo since before Christmas. What? Hey. Yes. Where have we been? The last time Where have we did one? So it's been a long, long time. Yeah. And uh, that what intro was, was almost as epic as uh, Larry's on the Republic, by the way. <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting I'm close. Getting close. I'm, I'm creeping yeah. into Larry territory. Joining us is all, uh, yeah, you, you get back from PAX. You you look like you scaved the you, PAX. Yeah, you, you didn't you didn't get the PAX pox, did you? You kind of I don't know, I did not get the PAX pox. I you. have immunity from my years of teaching from <laughs> elementary kids. They give me immunity. There you go. That's what you got to do. So I'm all good. Teach dirty little slobbering people. children for years before you go to PAX. That's <laughs> I avoided the show floor for two days. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back. Uh, man, this is a, we haven't done many episodes. We're a little slow getting out of tw- into 2015, but we'll get back on it. Um, still at home. Got to get the studio fixed up. Got some stuff going on, rearranging some stuff and fixing some gear. We'll be back soon. Um, but let's kick it off this week. Let's get the sad news out of the way. We heard rumors last week. We heard that joystick... Uh, was possibly being AOL was going to shut down Joystick. If you guys haven't heard the news today, uh, the entire Joystick video game division, which includes WoW Insider and Massively.com or Massively.Joystick.com, are all shutting down. Uh, it's official today. Everybody posted their posts on Joystick, WoW Insider, and Massively. Uh, and it looks like next Tuesday, I believe, is the second or the third um, the third, the third. Whatever, whatever day the third is this this seriously sucks for them they had to report on their own rumor yeah they didn't even know it they, like... they weren't even told about it they read about it on social media or something as well and they had no there are rumors that i won't have a job soon and it's, it's not it's not even next week it's next tuesday so last day yeah but they just find out like here you go last day is tuesday enjoy sad day man i really love massively i mean they were one of the sites that like i, I mean I know I know all the writers at Game Breaker and everybody, including myself, checked massively every day. I mean, there's probably not a day that's gone by in the past eight years that I haven't gone to massively, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, is, is there any other site out there that covers as much granular information about every MMO that they can get their hands on as massively did? I mean, if you wanted to find out about that massively little get them all. Ma- off-the-wall MMO you didn't know about, massively was the place to go, man. Yeah. No, and we had the pleasure of working with a bunch of those people and great, great group of people. Um, yeah, the industry's changing. I don't know. You know, I had heard rumors for a long time that I, I mean, I don't know if these are true. I don't have like, any confirmation, but I, I didn't hear that they were maybe actively like looking for buyers. But I had I had heard even as far back as two, three years ago that if somebody was looking to buy that 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 cluster. Uh, AOL would probably get rid of it and sell it. I heard that they were always trying to try to get get it rid of it. So I don't know. I think can AOL do anything right though? <laughs> like I think they're kind of dead in the water. Oh, well, they probably got to make some changes. I don't know. I don't know. These I think what it is is really that you know, especially enthusiast sites like like sites like that are just becoming harder and harder to keep afloat i mean what look at what we've especially in the video game industry we were talking about it i think late in the end of last year and we've seen kind of stuff like this happen across the board right i mean we saw GameSpot with a bunch of layoffs late last year we saw polygon with a bunch of layoffs late last year i mean yeah the industry just like Ma- massively had their budget cut in half right at right. some point last year i mean they laid, laid off a bunch of yeah. people it's it, i mean it was uh the when you look back, you like to think, okay, you know, when all those layoffs happened, they still had a chance to make it work. But, you know, hindsight 2020, it looks like the writing was on the wall from that point forward. They were just getting, AOL seems like they were just getting prepared to shutter it eventually. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder. I mean, you know, we, we went through our, you know, period as well when the community got us going through. I mean, we're probably one of the last, we might, we were like one of the last, like, pretty good sized sites, I think, that are completely independently not owned by the man. It's kind of crazy. 
which has ups and downs. Yeah. <laughs> the upside some... being uh, somebody we've never met before isn't going to come shut us down tomorrow. But it's always, you know, it's crazy. I think partially what, what's happening with my opinion, what's happening with some of these larger corporations is that being a publisher on the web is just, it, it just, it's moving at such a fast speed at this point of what's yeah, changing it so and often. it's changing so quickly. And, and, and I don't think that, you know, when you're part of a large corporation like AOL that you, I don't think you can react and move quick enough. Like it just, you, you right. I mean, these sites, these guys came about when, like, all of a sudden blogging became a thing, right? Make mm -hmm. all the money from blogging and stuff. We're like, all right, we got enthusiast blogs here. Let's create one for everything. We got Joystick here. We got Massively. We've got Wow Insider. And who knows how many others they've already shut down before yep. that they had. And, and, and back then, I mean, ad blockers barely existed. Um, yeah. And banner ad rates were, like, through the roof. And, and now it's... Banner ad rates are, are down in the gutter. It's harder and Parts harder to, 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 to make that happen. Everybody's just p fighting for page views because it's like if you can get one more page view out of every person that comes to your site, you're like making a, a good amount more money. Um, and it's just uh, with these larger companies like trying to figure out different monetization models and thinking outside the box to try and monetize. It must take them like forever to try and go up the food chain to, to like an AOL and say, hey, we think we should do X, Y, and Z. Um, and it's just not really working. So and plus, I mean, if, God, I mean, look at the MMO market too, right? Look at la last year's Massively Awards is kind of like writing on the wall of like they gave the <laughs> award to no one. <laughs> Which just kind of tells you, like, wow, this this sort of section of the video game industry is, is kind of hurting to some extent compared well, to what it's, it used it's to. It's a large be. portion where this industry has moved to. This industry has moved very much to the consumer, just hoping that they give money in some way, whether it's through them viewing something, looking, clicking something, reading something, playing some sort of video, or paying money into some system. There isn't a um, unlike all like other markets that are out there we don't have a finite like well here's the product and here's the price for it that you pay it's all here's the here's the stuff for you all to consume hopefully it generates some money hopefully hopefully we make enough money to pay these people so what do you think happened what do you think happens now to the to video game content in general do you think um do you think some of these people are going to get rolled over and we're going to because they the aol still owns a couple products in this under this umbrella and i got the one being engadget so i imagine they're going to just have some more general video game content possibly over there but nothing like nothing that the average massively goer would even want yeah and yeah. and i've heard that they've got something else they're wanting they, that they may possibly do with the joystick name itself so the name may stick around it's just not going to be the you know a video game site as in what it has been previously i don't know i think things are i think twitch and youtube are very evident of where things are going for content and to the individual producer creator and maintain yeah, and I mean that work that works for individual producers and stuff, but I mean oh, I don't yeah. know. There's something. There's still something to me about a collective force of having a website with with a group of skilled people who who make some really good stuff. I don't know. It's just uh, obviously I'm biased. Yeah, I mean, you can discover so many other things. You get so many other perspectives on everything, and you you know you're not just getting one perspective on everything. Like, like Game Breaker, we've all got different opinions on things, and that comes out through the site. You're not just getting one person's perspective on everything that we cover. And you've also seen, I mean, there's no obviously anybody who comes to Game Breaker on a daily basis. You've obviously seen us even uh, move away a bit from the MMO content. Um, I feel like the core of people who are still like writing everything for Game Breaker are still all MMO fans, and we love them. It's what we're still doing this week in MMO as a show. But you've even seen the content shift away from MMOs and go a bit broader and even into the stuff of just like fast, you know, fun, consumable content. And, you know, they're, they're right. there's no there's no hiding it. I mean, that's, you know, what people are gravitating towards and they want to like read throughout the another you know, day. Um, the other big thing that we've seen, like, again, this is from our perspective, is it's unbelievable how much how 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 many people have shifted from desktop viewing to mobile viewing in the past 12 months it's incredible yeah that, and that's probably yeah that's probably a large thing like you've got somebody who gets out here they pull out their phone they pull up the page they're they're walking down the street they just want to look at something real quick ha 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 done and that's really what it is no i mean <laughs> a year ago we had maybe 
I'm, I don't remember exactly, but I'm going to say somewhere probably around under 10%, maybe like 8 to 10% of all of our traffic was mobile. And the past like week, it's been about 50. 50. And that, that's, that's freaking incredible. I was talking to Ixter, our community manager, uh, last week sometime because he, he's a younger guy. He's like 21. And, and we were talking about because you had put up that stat that like fifty percent of our traffic was mobile traffic, and I was like, I was like, I was asking him, I was like, dude, as a younger guy, is that like basically the way you guys interact with the internet? And he was like, essentially, yes. He's yep. like, a lot of friends my age will look at my gaming rig and go, why do you have all that? I can do everything I need to do <laughs> my so right here in the palm of my hand. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, from when I from when I was teaching, when you would ask the students, you would ask them, you'd say, do you have internet at home? And if you weren't specific, they'd be yes. But it wasn't that they had a computer with internet. They had a, they had smartphone, a phone. Yeah. They had a phone, and that was that was internet to them. That was it. That was the internet was on their phone or on their parents' phone and stuff. So like, that's that's what they use. That's their main source of consumption route to go through. Yeah, I'm really that bummed. I'm parents. really bummed to hear about massively going away. And great group of writers. I mean, they really covered it like no one else out there. And really, like you said, you know, they 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 covered the stuff that uh, you know people were interested, in, but they also really covered the stuff that people weren't interested in. And it's kind of got a double-edged sword, right? It's you know you know you're going to spend time and create create content that a very small, very very small minority of people are even going to be interested in, yet they still kept doing it. Which is that's in some ways you know you, you need almost the size of something like AOL to keep something like that going to pay all those bills. Um, but sad day, sad day, sad day. So hopefully they all bounce back and uh, you know find. Yeah, best go. of luck to all of them. I, I hope they, I hope they come out, you know, on their feet, real, real soon from this. Because this yeah. is just, I, I couldn't imagine just like just one day you're just like, nope, no more. You're on your own. It's hard enough to to get a job doing this as it is, <laughs> much less having one and and one of the major sites you would have went to to try to get a job in this industry just gone. Just like gone. Three, you know, three sites under that banner just gone. Yep. All right, let's move on and talk about a little bit of MMO news for the week. We've been we've been gone for a while. So, uh, Guild Wars Two expansion got announced. Of uh, Heart of Thorns, this is the first expansion for Guild Wars Two. Um, the internet not Heart of the Swarm, not Heart of the Swarm. That's Heart of Thorns. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about this a bit. I know the internet went crazy when this got announced. Uh, Troy, you did a fantastic interview with Colin Johansson of ArenaNet. If you guys haven't watched that, it's on Game Breaker. Go search for it, find it, watch it, listen to it. It's great. He's got a lot of great info in there. And uh, expect more of that. We'll, we'll get Colin back on the horn for some more interviews in the future to find out more when they're ready to talk a little bit more about the expansion. So mm -hmm. what, first of all, I got to ask, do, they, uh, do, we, do we have any sort of time frame? What's the time frame? Date? What? When's this game coming out? Nope. Uh, when it's ready was the exact words they used both during the presentation and during the interview. When it's uh, ready. I feel like that hurts them, but okay. Uh, <laughs> like, they have said that it. there's going to be something playable at PAX East. Now, I don't know how much or what. He didn't go into any detail about what, but something playable is supposedly going to be at PAX East. So there, there, there'll be somebody's first chance to get their hands on something. Maybe the hang gliding. Let me sidetrack the PAX. You mentioned PAX really quick. Justin, you just got back from PAX. Give me a quick rundown of PAX before you get into this Guild Wars 2 thing. I'm curious. Like, So this is the first PAX South. It's never happened before. This is the first time we've done it. They usually do East and they do West. Now we've got South. You were there with the, the gigantic crew. Um I don't know what, what what was the scene like there. Uh, it was actually so it was super relaxed. The Pack South scene was super relaxed. I mean, not they didn't sell out all the tickets. They sold out all their three days, but they didn't sell out all the Saturday or Sunday tickets. Wow, uh, that's Friday interesting. Sunday tickets, Pax I mean, is like known Saturday. for selling everything out in like two seconds. Yeah, but apparently it still sold. It still sold um, more tickets than Pax um, East or Pax Prime never did their first time ah. or Australia. Where, where no, was it? Was it still, Dallas? San Antonio. Oh, wow. Why not Austin? Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Move to Austin. But, um, <laughs> it was relaxed, but I think they, they ran into some big problems. Like, so it was so relaxed and stuff, but there were very few companies there. There was not very many big um, booths at all. There was a couple big booths, a whole bunch of small ones, and then all, and then a, and then a huge indie section. And I think that's largely because PAX East is in five weeks now. I was, was going to say East is really close. It's like right around the corner. They bumped East up a month. So like I think all these companies that came through are just like, no, we're preparing for East already. 
We yeah. don't have the money to spend for Red the, the cost and so. just the unprovenness of how popular it is. But I guess they got to, they must yeah. feel really strongly about a South growing to the point that it is worthy of doing. And they'll just have to build it over the next two, three years, I suppose. I think, and in hindsight of it, though, I guess the people who were there, from what I've talked to, when I talked to people, I mean, just my own experiences, it was very relaxed and fun from that perspective. It wasn't supremely crowded. There was a place to walk when you were going places, you could find a path. So you didn't feel like you were... Um, Give it two years, just Justin. Long by people. <laughs> yeah. I know. I said it, but the, for the first one, it creates that illusion. So now more people are going to be like, oh, okay, let's jump on it. And then it won't be like that. But I've, I've heard other people in the game's media talking about, since, since PAX South, about how relaxed it was and how it was, it was sort of nice for them to not go in with a million different game meetings, and that's literally all they could do. But they just sort of roamed semi as fans and just kind of walked in and played some games just like everybody else does and they, they seem to really kind of enjoy the, the the more casualness of it like you said you know in two years it probably won't be like that anymore but they lay like it as was yeah it was, it was fun I, I i learned some new things i have to try the oculus rift on finally and now you want that awesome now i gotta get one <laughs> Whenever, ask it, i want it to be final i want the final version though. i'm not gonna pay for a dev kit or anything like that but I've got to get an Oculus Rift and play Elite Dangerous. Yeah, I've heard the new dev kit's fantastic, by the way. All right, let's go back to Guild Wars 2. We can't go, let's not, we went off track here. All right, <laughs> so announced Guild Wars at announced at PAX South. That's why I wrote up. So, yeah, they announced it at PAX South. Um, what, are, what, are the big, what are the big points? A new mastery system. What, is that, what does that actually involve? And what does that mean? The, the new mastery system is sort of a... Level 80 is still going to be the level cap. All your gear, all the gear you've got now is still going to be some of the highest end gear. The, the mastery system is sort of a post-level 80 sort of leveling system where you pick up points to spend in new skills and abilities. The mastery system itself is going to be account-wide, one of those things where you, know, you earn points on one character and you get points for everybody. There are going to be certain masteries that are very specific to the new zone, the Maguma jungle. Things like the hang gliding, Colin said, are oh, probably yeah. just going to stay in the jungle because it would break. Other er other areas in Terria aren't made to be flown from above. So uh, that kind of they stuff will, there will be specific things, but there will be general out-in-the-world masteries as well. It sounds like alternative advancement. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's essentially what it's, what it's going to be, is alternative advancement where there are some things specialized sort of towards the new content. How, do, how, do, how does the player gauge that how does the player what, what do i feel as a player of the achievement we know the mmo always is about the the progression level the you know i, I want to see the ding i want to see my level go up i want better <laughs> gear so how, how am i going to feel that with this new mastery system was that revealed at all uh they haven't really gone into a ton of detail other than kind of the overview of what it is um so we don't know if there's going to be like an xp bar you get to watch fill up before you get your next point mm -hmm. or anything like that right now i mean the other this is the big thing that i took away from from their announcement was that they really want to put the guild back in guild wars 2 they really want to focus on getting group gameplay back at the forefront and the core of what guild wars 2 is about so how, how did what, what, what's what's in the pipeline what is the, the expansion going to entail that is going to get that real guild feeling back into guild wars uh, here again they didn't give specific details but they, they talked about they're going to be delivering content in the new zones very specifically intended for groups uh, the, the way sort of things out in the world happen, you're, you're going to be sort of herded towards, you know, or I don't want to say herded towards, but you know, you're going to be encouraged to group up to do that sort of content. And, and maybe one of the biggest things, because like you said, they kept saying put the guild back in Guild Wars. Mm -hmm. And they said it even before they talked about Guild Halls, and they really started saying it after they said the word Guild Halls, which by the way, they, they gave this announcement in front of a live crowd. The crowd went nuts. That was the like, highlight, right? That, that was the highlight. Huge thing in, that was a huge thing in Guild Wars. You had a Guild Hall. Mm -hmm. There were like eight Guild Halls to choose from, and they were massive things. Of course, they involved part of PvP as well, but yeah. at least now they're getting Guild Halls. People can actually do stuff with their guild. Yeah, the, the, the crowd was so ready for that. I, they, even, I think even before he said the words Guild Halls, he was like, you know, something you guys have really been waiting for. You could hear the crowd go, Guild Hall! Guild Hall! <laughs> He's going to say said, it! Guild Hall. They're like, yes! <laughs> and, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to watch. But yeah, they're, they're trying to make groups and guilds specifically way more important, do things as a guild, have places to go and hang out as a guild. Again, not a lot of specifics. They're going to start giving more information, you know, as the weeks go by. But they seem to definitely, because they said it over and over, they have got this focus on 
Guilds are going to be important. Playing with other people and your friends is going to be very important for them going forward. That did get a little lost with two, right? I mean, the different Guild Wars 1 felt a lot more sort of like group heavy. And then when Guild Wars 2 did come along, especially the progression of just, you know, the, 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 the leveling content in the beginning, um, you know, you could do a lot of it solo. And it kind of, it felt a little bit more like the traditional MMO that you could solo. And I always kind of... You know, I don't know. We we talked a lot about that when we used to do the Guild Wars show, and we really felt that like you know it needed it needed to really embrace the guild aspect. So I'm I'm really excited to hear and see what they're going to release with the new expansion that kind of really get groups of players back together. Because to me, it's always if you're going to play an MMO, you might as well play with other people, or why not just go play a single player RPG? Like there's plenty <laughs> of them that do that way yeah. better. Exactly. For the most part, story-wise, and a lot of times even game mechanics, a single-player game will be a lot better than an MMO. But we all enjoy MMOs because we get to play with other people, smooth, seamless, and do things that we wouldn't get to do, you know, in single-player games with our friends. So the I most mean, annoying thing. Really need to M- focus on that. The most annoying thing when MMOs, and I'm not saying Guild Wars Two does this at all, but I'm just saying I can't stand when MMO companies tune their games for almost like solo play to where the point that you like totally, completely know like. No, dude, I'm not going to group up with you. It's like just not even worth it. I'll see you when I get to max level, and then we'll hang out. It's like, no, that is so we'll annoying. Yeah, and so many games are guilty of that. Like, so uh, I've, I've had friends leave games because they're like, dude, you don't group with me. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, but there's just no point right now. I mean, WoW is like that. I mean, WoW's, you know, leveling content, there's no reason to group up with anybody until mm-hmm. you ding 100. So, yeah, it's like, if you want to group up with me, dude, you got to come out and find me and get Pretty to me. Much. I'm busy. I'm not stopping for you. <laughs> All right, what's this new profession about? They got a new profession called the Revenant. What do we know about the Revenant? Uh, what we know so far is that they had initially said that they would probably give new weapons and uh, sort of introduce new races into the game before they introduced a whole new profession. And I asked Colin about that, and he said, you know, I'm specifically one of the guys who said that. He said the reason we changed our mind going forward to add the new profession over like new races is because it just brings more gameplay to the actual game. So, so what the Revenant is going to be, it's going to channel some of the legends of old, and and what it sounds like, now he didn't say this, so this is just me speculating a little bit, what it sounded like was sort of similar to like an elementalist where you change from from fire to lightning, Mm -hmm. you know, to to water, whatever. It kind of sounded like changing stances, kind of changes the the way your abilities work, but essentially they're going to be heavily armored, Uh, they're going to have like some some magical abilities with that heavy armor, and they're going to channel the legends of the past, and each legend is going to kind of affect the the abilities and, and the way you play the Revenant. So you can essentially assume the abilities and stats and powers of these legends. That, that's I mean, what it sounds like they're doing the more wise. Power of the mist. Yeah. And what's what's the mist? The power of the mist. The lore? What's the lore of the mist? Is there anything around the oh, mist? That could be really interesting. Yeah, the, the, the lore of actually the remnant existing is, uh, you know, Retlock went into the mists and he came back out with the ability to harness the power of the mists. And so the Revenant is like a brand new thing in Guild Wars. You know, he's the first one ever. And he's going to teach us all how to do it. Channel the powers of the mists and, and use the powers of the legends. And and it, I don't know. That's that's all the information they I, really gave. They showed I, like a split second of like two abilities in the video. But that's all we've really gotten so far. I'll probably come back and try out the Revenant just to try it out. Who won't? Say, it's, it's, it's new class. Right? going to try it out at least once, right? <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, definitely go watch Troy's video. Actually, we'll put it, we'll link it and put it down in the show notes for this show right below. So check below and look for that interview. Um, but there's all kinds of new stuff. The Maguma Jungles, they're talking new group content, new maps, new events, new storylines, new boss fights, a new Dub v Dub Borderlands map, new Stronghold PvP game mode, of course, the Guild Halls that we touched on a little bit. So details are sparse it was just the first initial announcement i would um i would say we're probably going to get a decent chunk of new information coming out of the next packs probably holding a bit more of that that's a big one that uh especially Mm -hmm. the arena net team loves packs they love announcing stuff at packs around the community events even more so than the e3s and stuff like that so i'm sure we're going to be talking a lot more about uh the expansion once that drops um all right next up i want to talk about elder scrolls but first Got to take a quick second to talk about our sponsor, Audible. If you guys have not checked out Audible, why don't you head over to gboffer.com slash audible right now to try Audible free for absolutely free for 30 days. And you're going to get a free audio book just by going to gboffer.com slash audible. They got tons of great stuff. If you guys have never checked it out, some of my favorite stuff is the World of Warcraft stuff. Their, 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 their fiction is just great. 
the, the, you can't go wrong with the Christy Golden stuff. Here, let me just play a little bit. It looks too peaceful and beautiful to be the prison of someone so horrible. Lady Jane Proudmore mused as she approached the Temple of the White Tiger. She, the Blue Dragon Calicos, Ranger General Verisa Windrunner, and King Varian Wren rode in a cart drawn by a steady-footed yak. All right, if I leave it on, we're just going to stay here all day, and I'm just going to listen to it. So head on over to GB Offer. To, <laughs> I mean, besides, they have a sci-fi, uh, you know, uh, actually, I want to I want to get the American Sniper book. I think I kind of want to listen to that. I haven't seen the movie yet. Don't tell me about it. No spoiler alerts. But they've got that on there. I want to check that out. Check it out today. Go over to gboffer.com slash audible. That's all you got to do. Sign up. Get a free book. Get a free 30-day trial. they got over 150,000 uh, titles to choose from. And, of course, by uh, just going by that your, to that URL and signing up, you not only uh, help yourself by getting an awesome service, you also help Game Breaker by supporting our sponsors, which is always lovely. All right, let's talk about uh, the Elder Scrolls Online, Mr. Troy, your game. Finally, finally doing what should have been done from the very beginning. So I, I was actually talking <laughs> about pre-show, and uh, I don't, I can't remember when I exactly sort of, I said sometime around the middle of the year I thought we would hear this. It's earlier than I expected. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah your prediction had, had, I don't remember, like you said, I don't remember exactly, but I do remember the day that you predicted, and it was like the first half of the year, free to play before consoles come out, and you, other than the exact, like, date, and maybe the, the exact model they went with, you pretty much nailed we it. We knew this was coming. So Elder Scrolls Online, yeah. if you didn't hear the news, is going buy to play, so buy the box and get to play. Um, the date that this is going uh, in effect is March 17th on the PC, um, Xbox and PlayStation, they're saying on June 9th. Um, what is this one-time character clone? How is this going to work? You are able to take your PC character and one time clone it over to the console version. Then after that point, they're two separate characters. Any changes that happen to them is separate. But during that one-time clone, I think it will clone all your items and your character and stuff like that and your progression. It will clone all that over onto the console version. And, and that, that's part of what they had sort of promised point. console players. You know, when console was initially supposed to come out last year and then it got delayed, delayed, they, they were like, you know, hey, if you guys want to go ahead and pick up a PC version, you know, we'll make sure that, you know, you're not just wasting your time playing the game. So that, that, that's part of that promise coming to fulfillment there. They're going to let you clone your character over and then just go from there on the, the console if you choose. But like Justin said, they're, they're going to be two separate characters at that point. The servers are not shared. It's not cross-platform. So once you copy, you can level up on the console. But if you come back to PC, that guy's still going to be where you left it. Which is kind of nice. I mean, I think, I, think, I think a lot of people are curious to see how the game is going to play on console. I'm, I'm one of them. Um, but I don't know if I really want to level a character from scratch. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure. But it, it, so, so for no cost, just to basically, if I buy the box, I can I can clone my character off of my PC, get it on my Xbox or PlayStation, and then just go from there. But again, they are separate. So um, they are going to have an optional subscription. So they will still offer a subscription for players who uh, are looking for that. And basically, you'll get access to all of the DLC during the duration of your um, membership. Um, you're also going to get a 10% bonus XP and gold gain, some crafting research and inspiration, things like that. Um, so how does this allotment of crowns work? This, this is the digital currency for the cash shop. So, yeah, it's based on the subscription that you buy. So if you buy, a, if you just pay for the 30 days, for just a straight 30 day subscription, at the, at the terms that the, as soon as you purchase, they'll give you 1,500 crowns. 90 days, if you prepay for 90 days, 4,500. And 180 days, they'll give you 9,000 right away. Okay, and the crowns are the, the, the currency that is going to be in Elder Scrolls Online that you're going to be able to buy things from the cash shop, which we what know. What I find th- funny here is there's no deal. There's no deal. Yeah, like, like usually the, you know, like the longer you sign up, the more Oh, you yeah, get, right? I didn't even realize yeah. that. Yeah, you did do the math. There's actually no, – so there's zero, zero incentive to get the 90 or 180-day version. Yeah. Just and Unless you just want all of that up front. If you just want it all now, then, then I guess. But, yeah, there's no, like, extra bonus crowns for, for going ahead and signing up, which is uh, a little weird. But. I'm seeing in chat, Ixer, just to, to quickly clarify. He's saying it's not actually free to get your clone. It's $20 per character that's eligible. 
unless you pre-ordered by June of last year, then you get it for free. So there, that's a little bit of clarification. That that's on the, the clone of your character from PC to console. Uh, Actually will be $20 per character unless you pre-ordered by June of last year. So um, so what, what's the cash shop? We know you, we're going to see unique mounts, some vanity pets, costumes, convenience items like health potions and soul gems, things like that. Um, I don't know. Look, uh, Looking at the entire list here, Troy, of just how they're setting this whole thing up, uh, as an ESO player, are you uh, are you guys excited? Are you happy with this model that they're going with? I think uh, I think most players really are. Once they they yeah. stop and think about it, this is this is where the game should have been. Hold on, now hold on, on the forum, hey, once the they see the said, once they stop and think about it. Yeah, well, it, up. Yeah, it's well. That's always the initial reaction when, when when games go free to play, and that's why I argue this should have been this model from the beginning because it's hard to overcome that that negativeness that comes with switching from sub to buy to pay player free to play because people just automatically assume oh the game is failing. That's the only reason to do it, or they just hate it just because it's different. People hate change. We know that. We talk about that all the time. So yeah, they won. The forums blew up. Oh, you've ruined the game. I'm unsubbing right now. Blah 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 let me let me tell you this since then in the game breaker nation in eso we've had people come back already pay a sub to come back because they're excited to not have to pay a sub to play later <laughs> in, in, in a month we've already got people coming back paying a sub because they're excited about the battle play how is the game right now? Tell me about the justice system and all. That's all in the game now, right? How is that all working? No, it's not in the oh, game. It's it is I on the it... public test servers oh, right okay. now. Oh, okay. I knew people were playing. All, all of that is on the public test servers. The uh, the champion system, the first part of the champion system is on the public test servers, and the justice system is as well. The, uh, the, the bounty system where other players can go hunt down and collect bounties on other players isn't in yet. This part is the pretty much kill all the random NPCs if you want to, pickpocket people, steal things. You know, from you know, like what are you hearing about all that from, from people you. playing on Test Row? A, a lot of people so far are really happy with with how it's shaping up to be. Um, like like we said, this isn't the final version, and they you know they obviously want it want the final version. But as we know what we're getting, as it is now, everybody seems pretty happy about it. it it's working pretty much like you would think, just kind of like Skyrim. If you steal something or kill or kill somebody, and a guard sees you or whatever, you you're, you've got a bounty. And there are different levels of that. You can be kill on sight, or you know they'll just shake you down for to get you to pay the gold for whatever your bounty is, and they take all the items you're stolen. And and if if you kill like if you kill somebody right in front of a guard, you're kill on sight. They they don't even ask questions. They just come after you. But if you go away for a few minutes and come back, that'll that, that meter will slowly go down to where you're just kind of wanted, and you can come back and just walk up to a guard and you'll throw your hands up and he'll be like, look, your choice, buddy. You, you can either pay your your bounty right now and, and clear it all out, or I can put a whooping on you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a it's a it's working pretty much how a Skyrim player would sort of think it would work. Do you, do you think most of that is coming with to go live? Do, you, do they have any sort of plans on when that's going to actually hit live uh, servers? Do you think it's going to be kind of based around when it goes by to play? This the the justice system and the champion system are going to go in before the buy to play system mm -hmm. goes live. So all that's going to be in there the day that the buy to play kicks off, and we actually the buy to play stuff is in the public test server right now, but we haven't haven't actually gotten at least unless it happened in like today or something, we haven't had access to the cash shop yet, so we haven't actually seen how much things are sort of going to cost or anything like that. But the the justice system, the champion system, is going to be in there prior to buy to play going live. So I'm curious right now, like this. At access to all DLC during duration of membership. I almost wonder, like, right now, if there's a whole bunch of story content they have stored up or they're storing up to release in DLC segments, which I think would be kind of good for people who are wanting just that story aspect of it. Like, if they can, if they can pump out more story gameplay for the people and just this DLC packs each month. Kind of in modules, like, like storylines yeah. and arcs of just, like, hey, here comes a storyline arc and play through this, and it's not I, I really long. think that would be... I think that would really be. I, mean, I think that works for them. I think no, the, secret, the Secret I, World does that very well. Mm -hmm. The yeah, way I, they I, do their little DLCs and story arcs is, is really awesome. And I like the idea that you can come back three months later and not pay for five DLC pages, just pay for a month sub, and you've got mm -hmm. access to all that DLC. 
Oh. Or if you don't want to sub, you can just pay for the DLC. Like, we don't know how many, how much. That's going to be one of the big questions. Like, how much is the act to just buy the DLC? If I don't want to sub, how often are you going to put out DLCs, and how much are they actually going to be? That, that's sort of a big question right now. And so, you know, you can either kind of maybe choose which way you want to go about it. You know, do you want to sub for a couple of months and play? And then, like you said, leave and not worry about it. And when you come back, if you're, like, exactly like you said, if you're five DLCs behind, 15 bucks, boom, baby, I'm into anything I want to do for the next 30 days. So, you know, the, the price of how much the DLCs is going to be a big determining factor on sort of which one's the way to go. Yeah, and how often they sort of, you know, how they start releasing that stuff. So, mm-hmm. all right, well, mark down your calendars, March 17th for that. Have you guys been away from uh, Elder Scrolls Online? Um, I don't, would you would you suggest pe- people get back in there now and check it out, kind of hang out in the sidelines, wait a little bit longer? What, what would you say, Troy? If you want to have some say in how the final systems actually get launched, you need to come back now and get on the PTS. Um, If you're just waiting until that kind of stuff hits, then just just hold off because it's not live yet. Um, I've I've got a good buddy who's been waiting to come back, and he's like, you know, tell me when it's time. And I've told him, it's on the PTS, so it's not time yet. But when it go when this goes live, it's time to come back to ESO. A lot of people have been you know, quote unquote, calling this ESO 2.0. It's it's everything. There's a lot more stuff on the PTS besides just what we talked about. There's a lot of good changes coming, and uh, everybody seems pretty excited for it so far. All right, last up this week, let's talk a little bit about H1Z1, the uh, zombie survival MMO, or not MMO, according to who you pay attention to. Um, <laughs> uh, from SOE. Um, I think we've all been playing it. I've been out of it for about a week traveling, but. Um, They've been pumping out the other day. They've been pumping out uh, just just pretty pretty consistent updates on a pretty regular basis and and doing doing a pretty good job. So, I mean, I gotta say, like you know, we we talked. A little, uh, this is an alpha game. This is alpha. We gotta preface all these like conversations with this. I know for it's some of you out there, very, like, we very... know, but we gotta say it again and again <laughs> and again because this game is in alpha, so it's not even in beta, and we're playing it. Um, so of course there's going to be issues. Of course we're going to talk about all the things that are like, oh, this is broken and this is weird and they need to do this. Of course it's alpha. That's what they're doing. Um, but so the whole, I mean, stability has been pretty damn good. Um, yeah, I haven't seen too much issue there. I mean, they have, they've had a couple and they've reset servers. They had some issues day one as any day one game has. So... I mean, there's a lot. Actually, but they, they, overall, it's been up a lot more than I thought it would be up. Same here. Especially like the first week. Yeah. I, I don't know like, the exact numbers, but I think it's 200 people on the servers. 200 on a server. That's. I think that's. I think that's the. I think that's the max. Which it's a smaller. It's a smaller map than DayZ, but more people than DayZ can hold on a server. So we've got a. You know, it's got a bunch of different server types. Um, even not the PVE. God, I don't know why that exists but okay <laughs> sure um but there's pv there's vanilla there's a whole di- a bunch of different server rule sets so kind of a diff- bunch of different flavors um one thing i know a lot of people are loving is the battle royale servers which i have to admit i haven't tried yet i have not tried have you guys tried them i have not mm-hmm. i do need to try we are it's such we are it's such it's old school <laughs> mmo players <laughs> I'm like, I go in there. I gotta, I gotta do the regular world. Let's just jump in and play things. What's this? People are having a lot of fun in Battle Royale, from what I hear. But of course, these three hosts, none of us got into them because we're all into the old school MMO (laughs) stuff. So, I um, want to live in this world and just like be part of the world. So yeah, let me say this real quick too about the PVE servers. Oh my God, just don't. I'm a PVE guy. Like, <laughs> and you're like, don't like, do it. Last year, we were what talking about fight. The zombie like, AI doesn't even work. Well, dude, like, yeah, I was like, you know, I don't know what the you fuck know, was. even even when we talked about this before, I was like, you know, maybe a good PVE server would be what I would want to play. Oh my god, it was terrible. It lost all of the tension, all of the drama. There just it was. And the only reason I got on was because the PvP server I was on went down. So I was like, well, you know, why it's down? Let's check out the PVE server to see what it's like. It sucks. There's no reason to play. It's like. I sort of feel like, like they should do away with them because I really feel like it's almost going to give really some bad sort of community style press for them in the long run. Because I think <laughs> I think that even though the P, I know there's a bunch of PVEers right now screaming at us saying like, no, don't tell people that we want the PVE server. Personally, I think they're going to be bored within like 60 to 90 days, and then they're going to go, this game sucks, I'm bored. But it's because... 60 to 90 days? You're going to be bored within 60 to 90 minutes. All right. I I feel like these people are walking around town these PvE servers just like, hey, Joe, hey, Frank, what's going on? That's exactly what it was like. My house is that... 
that house is looted already, man. Might as well go ahead and check over here. Hey, want to join me to this house loot? Let's check it out. Oh, there's a zombie. Exactly. Blink. And even, all, even yeah. there's a zombie. All right, all right. let's just uh, let's shoot it. And I mean, even even if they ramp up the like the sort of horde mode style of of zombies, and even if they tuned it up way higher for PVE servers, I still don't think the, like you said the tension and all of that is just gone. I mean, the reason that these sort of games like Daisy and and and, and the white knuckle experience is not really from the NPCs. It's from the other players. I don't know. I don't get it. Anyway, with all with all the uh, you know little little teen, you know right now the if you haven't jumped in there yet, um, again it, this is the type of game that you almost want to jump into only if you're totally willing to deal with stuff that's just well game breaking to some extent. You're gonna have days where it's just broken, right? I mean, loot spawns have been up and down like crazy. People have been screaming. There's not enough loot. Then they tune it the other way. Now I see everybody screaming that there's too much loot. It's like and everybody it's has a gun loot. now. Hold what on. the fuck? The way so the the beforehand you couldn't find ammo or weapons or anything. The only way you could get it was by killing somebody who had it. Now it's now it's all like I jumped into it. I had um, I had shotguns. I had ARs. I had hunting rifles. I had like 500 <laughs> ammo. And the first 30 minutes just walking around and finding places. Every single drawer had something in it. I had like 10 bottles of water already. I was like, what and, is this? And they'll hopefully work that. I hope they work that out because that... that they actually that, made another change today. Because that then, th- that, that then falls into the same category as the PVE servers is then like, well, if you can yeah. just get everything, then you just mm. beat the game uh, It doesn't matter at all. Like, I just beat yeah. the game. It's over with. But like we said, it's alpha, and they've probably kind of got to go to both extremes to, oh, to yeah. find a good middle sure. ground. So I mean, well, it's, it's sort of to be expected. But yeah, it, yeah. it's crazy when you get when you find so many guns. I start like going out in the woods to drop guns because I can't keep them all. So they had issues with the with the issue with the previous loot system. Apparently, was a respawn thing. Loot inside of um, any anything you had to open up did not respawn. It was never respawning at all, which is why there was the loot was so scarce. They mm-hmm. fixed their respawn system, and they fixed it too well. So now everything was just like respawning every fifteen minutes or something. You can stand inside of a house and look at it later and get something again. I have to say, from our experience though, and Justin, tell me if you agree. Like you know, the few nights that we were also playing together, and you had a bunch of your buddies on, there was like I don't know, maybe like six, seven, eight of us started building a base and stuff. With all the bugs aside and even the ups and downs of like how crazy it is, the game is a ton of fun. There's a lot of potential there, especially when it comes to, I think, base building. Now, this is where I'm not sure where SOE is going to go with the game, and I, I really want to see is because, uh, you know, what I what, what I saw in, in H1Z1 or what it what was hoping for was a little bit more of a persistence to the game instead of just a session-based, like, you know, we know we're going to die over and over. That that's We get that. But with the base building aspect to it, I really saw a lot of potential to you know have compounds and areas nice. of the map locked down that's why we went and found that area back in that like you know i found this like really cool area like you know butted up against the edge of the map somewhere that like nobody really went and there was already um like an abandoned base from people not not a player built base but like an npc base that i hung out for a couple hours and really nobody kind of came and, and ran by too much and that's why i grabbed you and we grabbed all our buddies and came over and said hey this is a really good place like let's take this compound build around it and make this thing even larger and just own this like section of the map and i think when you get into that aspect of it and you can start locking areas down and putting walls up and things like that and having fortresses that's where the game could get seriously interesting with some large scale battles of people like you know trying to invade other people's <laughs> camps and all that stuff but then there's part of me that goes i don't know if they're going to go that way like i don't know if i don't is the game going to actually be developed in a way that, that it's going to let those encounters kind of last longer than the the flash in the pan of build a base to a certain extent die all your friends die and your base gets ripped down and you're starting over every week I don't know. Like, speaking of that place that you found that we brought us to, mm-hmm. I went back there mm-hmm. a couple uh, two days ago, and when we tried to build on it, I guess the building was broken or whatever. Someone's built up around that entire place. Oh, see, I, and they've got the whole they've got the whole thing <laughs> fortified now. Of course they do, because it was like the there. perfect I was area. To check him out. He would have come out. Oh, because it's the perfect place. <laughs> I f- mother effer. We need to take that place back over. <laughs> but yeah, so the the biggest problem right now I see with one thing I see with base building is it's very limited right now. There's not very many options. You have to you have to use their raised ground platform, mm-hmm. 
in order to do anything. You can't build, you can't just put walls down somewhere. There's no freeform building. So the, except for the little shacks or something, you can place a shack in freeform places. But there's no actual, like, you can't place any walls in a freeform setup. And that's very limiting in terms of design. Everything is a square or a rectangle in this game. Yeah, because, I mean, essentially what we yeah. wanted to do was basically put walls up and build, like, just a wall across the road in a fortress and just sort of take over an area backed up into the hills. I mean, that's, yeah. again, I, I, who knows where they're going to go with this. I mean, Smed, if you're listening, let's think back to those SWG days. Remember those days that I could hire mercenaries to NPCs to actually guard my player city? You See, that was this be... game was a new home. <laughs> well, that... I was going to say, you told you us this was a home. Home. You got your players home. Well, that, I mean, th- 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 some of those aspects were killer back then. Like, back if you didn't play, so the Star Wars Galaxies, when we had a player city, you could hire NPCs to guard the, the gates of your city. So when you were offline and or off doing stuff and questing, if somebody started attacking your base, you got a message that said like, hey, your, your, your city's under attack. And then you could get back to it, get people online and then go defend it. And the NPCs would be there long enough to at least hold them off to the point that you didn't lose everything. And then the, you know, the walls that they did destroy, you'd have to pay the upkeep, but you didn't lose the entire city. I could see stuff like that being com- just awesome for for cities in 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 you know H one Z one is hire mercenaries to guard the gates and things like that. Ah, there's a lot of potential yeah. there. I gotta say it's a lot of fun. It, it's uh, I'm actually looking forward to get back into it. Um, but I I'd say for anyone who likes this type of gameplay style, though, I I'm, I I I totally feel like I was it was a worthy twenty bucks easily. I've already got on my my twenty dollars worth. Of a oh yeah, I've I played enough for twenty dollars for sure. And uh, see, I'm not even usually into this this type of game the way that that I ended up playing because I thought I was like you know maybe a good PVE server, but no, I, I, twenty bucks, heck yeah. I mean, and and that's just in the alpha stages, looking at the potential of what it has, it's it's worth the twenty bucks. So, so this thing, I don't know what I, I what I want to see from them, considering we are in early access. I want to see a timeline of like. What their plans actually are? What is coming to this game? Um, I think it's actually so. If you if you go over, they do have. Um, so if you remember back in the Planet Side Two Days SO, we kind of came up with this new idea to like really be transparent with timelines and explain what the development process was going to be like. Um, I do think that there was a post that said we're going to hold off for the first. I don't know if it's like thirty or sixty days of alpha to not release that yet because it's just so early and we want to just right now, all we want to do is squash bugs and make sure you guys can play the game. But I do believe in about 30 to 60 days, you'll start seeing there's an area of the site. I don't know. Somebody will link to it in chat or somebody will tell you, but there's a, there's an area of the site that will start laying out what that is. So I agree though. It'd be nice to start knowing what's going to happen. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, because yeah, I think it can be are, really good if they can if they can consistently start putting out stuff and things out there. Like I think I think it'd be good. Get and and really set itself apart from like Daisy and and the other survival games out there. That that's going to be the biggest thing, you know. Really oh, make God. a statement that you're, you know, this is how we're so much different than everybody else. And that's where like the persistent the persistent aspect of it to me is is the winner because that's what we all want. Yeah. That's what all the Daisy players wanted. And if you don't do that, then basically you're, it's a bit more of an arcadey Daisy to me. Come on, I mm-hmm. want to take over that damn mansion. That mansion is ours, man. We're gonna yeah, that mansion, yeah, we need to build our, that mansion is that we're gonna we're gonna, we gonna take that. over that whole entire area. All right, so we're back. We'll be back next week. Uh, Troy, follow him on, on the Twitter at Noobfridge, and of course, all his work over on GameBreaker.tv. I'm gonna kill time while I put music back on. There it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're not gonna sing our way. No, out I'm not gonna okay. sing our way. Out. I'm just gonna play some. <laughs> dubstep on there uh justin follow him on twitter at jk kennedy tv and check out his live stream as well what are you streaming these days are you back gonna go back to day z or not day z h1z oh, one i i i've been streaming some h1z one i'm gonna i'm gonna put up elite dangerous some more again i yeah. think i'm gonna play some more of it gotta get back in there they had a big yeah. update one one it's actually on the it's only beta tested right now so oh one one yet. is beta okay it's coming soon yeah. though right what's the yes. big what's the big uh change coming in that um, I think we've just got um, grouping. It's That's better it. ways to group and stuff with each other. They're working on all the new grouping stuff. So, well, hopefully we'll talk about that pretty soon and get some more information. So, uh, you can follow me at Gary again and follow Gamebreaker TV at Gamebreaker TV. Um, and uh, check out the site, Facebook, likes, all that kind of good stuff. And we'll see you next week for some more of this week in MMO. Have a great week. <laughs>